On today's episode, Elon confirms that Starship is launching this month, hippies sabotage Giga Berlin, electric cars create artificial sunlight, and the flying car is real. Elon Musk and SpaceX have revealed that their latest iteration of the Starship Super Heavy rocket is now prepared for launch at the company's rocket testing site in Starbase, Texas. SpaceX confirmed that the new orbital flight candidate has been stacked and tested in a process called the wet dress rehearsal. This involves pumping 10 million pounds of cryogenic liquid methane and oxygen into the ship and booster, then taking the vehicle through a full launch countdown that ends at T-10 seconds. This essentially confirms that all of the plumbing and electrical systems on the giant rocket booster and upper stage ship are working properly and ready for flight, which we know is coming soon. But before we get to that, SpaceX has finally released their full report on Starship's flight test number two, which happened on November 18th, 2023. You might remember that it was a much more successful outing than the first Starship launch on 420, but even still, we saw both stages of the rocket explode in mid-air, even though they were both intended to splash down in the ocean while still in one piece. Here's the scoop. The Starship's first stage, known as the Super Heavy Booster, completed a full-duration burn of all 33 Raptor engines, which was a first for Starship, and the booster flight was successful all the way up until the hot stage separation event. Following separation, the booster flipped around to initiate a boost back burn. This is essentially slamming on the brakes and trying to get the rocket to start falling back down to the general location where it launched from. It involves restarting 13 of the booster's inner engines. During the relighting process, several of the engines began to shut down, which wasn't a huge deal until one particular engine, quote, failed energetically, which set off a chain reaction that quickly moved from the base of the rocket up through the propellant tanks and caused the vehicle to burst like a balloon. The vehicle breakup occurred more than three and a half minutes into the flight at an altitude of around 90 kilometers over the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX says the most likely root cause for the booster explosion was determined to be filter blockage where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engines. That leads to a pressure loss where the oxygen enters the fuel pump. A rocket engine relies on the thermodynamic principle that energy will always flow from high pressure to low pressure. So if you lose pressure at the fuel pump, which is above the combustion chamber, then the combusted energy can start to flow up instead of down. SpaceX has implemented hardware changes inside future booster oxidizer tanks to improve propellant filtration capabilities and refined operations to increase reliability. As for the rocket's second stage, this had a much more fortunate journey that brought it 90% of the way towards success, but fell short again due to a problem with the liquid oxygen. The ship stage of the vehicle definitely did make it into space, but just before the engines were about to shut down for the coast phase, the Starship began venting liquid oxygen. Why did they do that? Well, this test flight had no payload on board, so Starship was flying much, much lighter than it would ever be during a real-world application. SpaceX could have compensated for that by essentially filling the tank with less propellant, but additional propellant had been loaded anyway in order to gather data that would be more representative of a real payload deploying mission. So that excess propellant that didn't get burned then needed to be disposed of prior to re-entry into the atmosphere. SpaceX didn't want a bunch of rocket fuel free falling through the sky over Hawaii at supersonic speed, which is fair. Anyway, SpaceX says that a leak in the aft section of the spacecraft that developed when the liquid oxygen vent was initiated resulted in a combustion event and subsequent fires that led to a loss of communication between the spacecraft's flight computers. This resulted in a command shutdown of all six engines prior to completion of the ascent burn, followed by the autonomous flight safety system, detecting a mission rule violation and activating the flight termination system, leading to vehicle breakup. The flight test's conclusion came when the spacecraft was at an altitude of about 150 kilometers and a velocity of about 24,000 kilometers per hour, becoming the first starship to reach outer space. So, in order to prevent that whole ordeal from happening again, 
SpaceX has implemented hardware changes on upcoming Starship vehicles to improve leak reduction, fire protection, and refined operations associated with the propellant vent to increase reliability. They've also moved from a hydraulic steering system for the vehicle's Raptor engines to an entirely electric system that also removes potential sources of flammability. All of this means that we are much, much more likely to witness a much more successful flight test the next time around, and given the current state of the rocket and the launch preparations, we're probably looking at a flight as soon as next week and probably two weeks at the most, so stay tuned. I'm constantly in search of free and easy methods to learn more about how science and technology affect the world around us and shape our future. This is why I've become such a fan of today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant offers thousands of lessons in STEM fields that cover all levels from basics to advanced topics. This is customized content that moves at your own pace and new lessons are added every month, so you always have something new to learn and explore. I've been learning all about artificial intelligence and neural networks recently, and this is something I've always struggled to really understand the details of, but the visual animations on Brilliant are helping me to get there one lesson at a time. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the Tesla space or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. On March 5th, the lights went out at Tesla's Giga Berlin factory and early reports indicate that this was no accident or routine failure. This was sabotage. It's been a rough couple of weeks for Tesla in Germany. First, it had to shut down production due to supply issues with cargo ships getting delayed while moving through the Red Sea because of the civil war in Yemen. Then it was the local residents of Grunheide, the municipality where Tesla Gigafactory Berlin is located, voting against the new expansion of the plant, which requires more than 100 hectares of forest to be cleared. While at the same time, environmental activists had been trying to make their point by camping out in the trees of the forest that Tesla wants to cut down. And now Tesla has had to stop production and evacuate the Gigafactory, with the likely cause being a sabotage attack by those same tree-dwelling hippies. According to a report by German media, unknown people set fire to a high-voltage pylon in the area around the factory early on Tuesday morning, resulting in about 2,000 people losing power, including Giga Berlin. Tesla told local media in Germany that it secured the factory, but it's not clear when it can restart production due to the power situation. A design studio and a creative agency in Norway are using the technology from an electric vehicle to bring artificial sunlight to a dark community. Rampton Camping is located on a fjord about 22 miles southwest of Oslo. Like many other Norwegian communities, they only receive between 6 and 8 hours of sunlight per day in the winter. Void, a design studio, and Inoshin, a creative agency, are using a Kia EV9's battery to power a 16-foot LED disc, emitting artificial sunlight to the campground. An EV9 can power 110 volt to 220 volt appliances with its battery. The EV9 Void and Inoshin use for the sunlight drives from Oslo to Rampton Camping, gives the LED disc a 24 hour charge, and makes it back to Oslo on a single charge. The Kia Smart Charge feature allows for bi directional charging, which lets electricity flow in and out of the vehicle. David Hilbert, Kia Europe's head of marketing, said, the car's bi-directional charging can extend the role electric vehicles can play in our lives, whether for camping or being part of a broader electricity grid. Most electric vehicles only have unidirectional charging, where the car takes alternate current electricity from the electric grid and converts it to direct current electricity to be used by the electric vehicle. A vehicle with bi-directional charging is able to take the direct current electricity and turn it back to alternate current. Kia America is currently working with Wallbox, an electric vehicle charging company and energy management provider, to bring the technology overseas from Europe. The future of transportation is here as aerospace company Durrani has revealed an electric aircraft that's set to replace those pesky gas-guzzling cars. No, this is not an episode of the Jetsons. We are being serious. In a livestream event on March 1st, the aircraft maker revealed the groundbreaking two-seat H1X aircraft that will be small enough to fit into any garage. 
While it may still be in testing stages and does require FAA certification, the company has revealed that plans are already in place to sell six units as early as 2025. Once Durrani gets FAA approval, which they're working on securing, the plan is to produce seven units a day. Considering the company already has 450 pre-orders for the H1X aircraft, demand is only expected to pick up as the aerospace company projects to be mass-producing units by 2026. If you wanted to get your hands on one of these one-of-a-kind aircraft, the cost of purchasing one is expected to be in the range of 300000 to 400000 while the aircraft is not technically a car, it does have landing gear and wheels to help maneuver the vehicle in and out of launching pads, but it is unable to drive on a regular road or anything of the sort, says Durrani CEO Doran Merdinger. Quote, the idea is to fly from place to place but not be stationary like a helicopter when you've landed. Unlike conventional aircrafts, the H1X is relatively easy to fly and will require a license, although not an ordinary pilot license, according to the CEO. With a maximum speed of 120 miles per hour and a range of 60 miles, the vehicle certainly packs more of a punch than you'd expect. The 1,850-pound aircraft will be able to carry a capacity of 500 pounds of cargo on flights while being able to fly for as long as 40 minutes on a single charge. Speaking of charging, you can charge the aircraft with EV quick chargers, allowing a full charge in roughly 25 minutes.